Alright, so I wanted to use my glasses, but it's pretty reflective. <laughs> I like my glasses though, so I'm gonna keep them on. Um, hello, welcome to another video. It is so good to see you. I haven't uploaded in quite a bit. Um, I've been traveling and I've come back. So um, now I'm back to uploading for both my channels, my um, Tarot with Nay, and now as I renamed this channel, Travel with Nay. Um, so I don't have a van, but this video is going to be about some of the differences I see between owning a van versus a car. Don't mind my cat Teddy in the back. Um, or do mind them if you want to see them. Um, so I am currently manifesting a van. I uh, took part in a giveaway sweepstakes thing and I'm really hoping it comes through. Um, and I'm kind of putting my mindset in already in that space of like, if I did have a van, what are some things I would face? So recently I traveled to Washington. It was like a four week journey going to and from. And there are a lot of benefits to having a car um, while you're traveling, right? So for those who don't know, there is, it's kind of difficult to find places to park uh, safely overnight. Um, if you are staying in one place in a city, you might be able to learn the ins and outs um, over time of where it's okay for you to kind of stay or you might work out an agreement with a certain store or maybe a friend in the neighborhood um, being able to park along the street etc etc it depends on where you're at but the biggest setback and biggest struggle I see when traveling is trying to find somewhere that you're allowed to park overnight um, with a car I can get away with a lot more I think than what a van can right because with a car SUV vehicle and successfully stealth camping, you can probably make it look like you're a customer. Um, and the key part is to look for places that are 24 hours and that helps you blend in a little bit more. But with the van, it's obviously a much bigger rig. It's much more like, especially on the West Coast with so many RVers, so many van lifers, it's very clear that, okay, if it's a van that isn't like white or marked with a logo, uh, it's pretty much someone living in there, right? So it's a lot easier to spot and for those cities that have like security um, and Walmart parking lots and all these places, it's very easy to get pointed out. Um, over the course of my travels, not just on this trip, but other trips, I've stayed in like Planet Fitness parking lots where it's 24 hours, 24 hour fitnesses, Anytime Fitness, all these gyms that are 24 hours and even like a 24 hour grocery store at some points. Um, I don't stay at Walmarts because a lot of the ones I've seen along the West Coast have the said oh, no overnight parking. I have a bit of a problem with this because it's like, it's very obvious on the West Coast that RV culture, van life culture is very popular. And instead of kind of restricting those people who oftentimes tend to be the biggest customers, they are restricting it even more. And it's like, you're not using, like if it's a small parking lot, I understand, but like you're not using 100% of that parking lot all the time. And most of the times the people who stay in RVs and vans and we're pretty much like they're pretty much out by the next morning um it's usually just to sleep overnight and if there's no customers overnight why do you need that space overnight you know it's a little but I do also understand that there are a lot of people who take advantage and who are slobs and who leave a mess and who cause trouble and unfortunately it affects everyone so um, I will say for my travels in a car, in a vehicle, it, it's still been difficult. So I can imagine with the van, it's even more difficult, um, especially all the places like I feel like if you're not on BLM land, you're not paying for national parks. Um, you're not going into super remote areas, who, which I still haven't discovered for myself. But like unless if you're not going to those places it's extremely difficult to find a place where you can peacefully park um like when i was in california the amount of streets where it was like okay you have to leave no parking from 9 p.m to 6 a.m or like no overnight parking no street parking here 
uh, it was like extremely rare to find a street parking or something comfortable where you could just be peaceful right like I often found myself having to get up super early in the morning um, and then moving like halfway through the morning just to be able to not get a knock. I personally haven't gotten a knock except for one time. Um, when I stayed in a 24-hour fitness, that is Teddy, by the way. Um, when I stayed in the 24-hour fitness, that apparently wasn't 24 hours. So on Apple Maps, it was still listed as 24 hours, but I got a knock at like 4 a.m. by a security guard who said that it's not, it's private property, blah, blah. So it's like, obviously it's much easier to find somewhere to park with a car, much easier to blend in with a car, um, but it's much more difficult with a van. And so uh, manifesting this into my life, that's something I have to take into consideration, especially because I don't travel 100% of the year, right? There are, I travel intuitively, so there are some days where things are going to come or some weeks or some months when I might just get the urge to travel somewhere but most of the time I'm just staying in one place so you know there's struggles on both ends because you know in this town that I'm in in Sedona it is very difficult in a lot of places uh, unless you're in a dispersed camping area outside of the city um, I mean, some grocery stores, I've seen people park in their vans and it seems to be okay, but I don't know, sometimes it's random and like there's just these random crackdowns. So it's just like living in your vehicle all, all around can be a little frustrating in terms of just how many restrictions um, a lot of companies and businesses place on the people who live in this lifestyle. It almost feels like we're being punished for it naturally because in the matrix, you know, they would rather you spend all your money paying rent than to be living out of a vehicle. And it's like, well, <laughs> it's our choice, you know. Um, so that's one of the things. So sleeping um, while well, parking overnight, but sleeping specifically. <laughs> Now, this is for me specifically because I know there are a lot of people who live in vehicles and cars who have built out really comfortable things. I do not have a built out vehicle. The only adjustments I've made is to taking out the seats and leaving like the back seat so it's flat. Um, taking out like these headrests on some of the things so they could fold all the way down um, and I have more space. But... I don't have a futon I don't have I literally just have a yoga mat so that's on me <laughs> so don't take this but even with like sleeping and moving around I really want a van specifically because of like the ability to stand up <laughs> having headroom is super important to me um kind of having to always be in the seated position it takes a toll on your body um when I sit up like perfectly straight in the back of my vehicle I literally reach the ceiling and it's a little uncomfortable sometimes um I would love to be able to stretch out and yes it's like okay I could just go outside but I've been a homebody always <laughs> and there are days when yes I want to be outside all the time and I take Teddy outside and let him roam around. But there are days when I just want to be inside. And with a car, I feel a lot more claustrophobic because it just feels like everything's so small. And it serves me in some things, but it also hurts me in other ways where it just feels like too much, you know? So um, there's that. Uh, not to say you can't sleep comfortably in a car. Again, my personal decisions are the reason <laughs> I'm uncomfortable but you know just being able to stand up and walk around in a van in a vehicle is something I long for <laughs> um that's just me personally let me know if you can relate down below uh so parking restrictions sleeping um filling up on water and resources so in a vehicle um I don't have any setups of like a sink or anything um I pretty much can just buy a jug of water or a 24 pack case of water and that's all I have to do and I'm drinking the water I'm using it as I need to for whatever I know a lot of vans have more integrated systems where there's like a gray water tank and a fresh water tank and they need to fill up in specific places um I guess not need to, but typically they go to specific places to fill those things up and to empty out their gray water. Um, 
and I think there's something else that they fill up and I'm not quite sure what it is uh whereas in a car apart from you know I buy my food I buy my water and it just sits in my car as it is um I guess that's not really a pro or con but you know just like that extra step of having to go somewhere specifically to fill up um in terms of gas the only state I've noticed or seen this in on the east coast um or the west coast specifically is Nevada where the diesel was actually cheaper than regular gas every other state I've seen diesel more expensive so I don't know what it is about Nevada um but yeah so gas prices I in this entire trip to Washington I used Instacart to earn money which sucked um literally I had to plan out specifically what's out going to like major cities or places with enough stores for Instacart so I could make money to keep going um but I got it it did it worked <laughs> um but it was super expensive and not every state is created equal in terms of gas California being uh, five dollars and above in a lot of areas not fun um but even like being at like four dollars and something like I'll constantly have to having to find like the cheaper gas just for the sake of like money um i use the app gas buddy to find like cheaper gas if i can if i'm able to travel like the distance to get there i will um i'm really happy to be back in arizona where it's much cheaper <laughs> but yeah that was something that along my travels really sucked and i know that getting a van and having to pay for diesel gas for that specific van that i'm manifesting is going to definitely require me to shift my focus on how i make money because for one can't really do instacart with a van um maybe you can but i don't think they would allow you on the app and then two um just like I don't want to drive around to make money anymore it's super exhausting it takes a lot of miles um it, it adds so much more pressure onto something that's already meant to be traveling so like driving and traveling around is one thing and I enjoy that but driving around after I'm already exhausted after I've driven for hours and I now have to shop a whole order and I know there's other gig work apps I just prefer Instacart um but now I have to shop around for orders then I have to drive the extra miles to the person's house it's no longer gonna work for me so I am working on um, setting up my income streams again setting up my tarot um, and like I've been getting a lot of downloads about coaching and uh, creating courses and stuff so I'm going to be working on that over the next few weeks um but yeah so gas expensive either way but I, I would imagine that a van has more gas mileage than a, via, a car, depending on like what year and what type of van you have. So maybe you'd be able to go further or longer in a van, um, but it's still expensive either way, right? Um, the size of your vehicle. So this kind of goes with parking, but in a car SUV, you can park pretty fine in any normal parking spots for larger rigs like RVs and vans, uh, depending on the size of the van. It might be a little harder to find parking that is comfortable or that allows you to park safely. Um, you might end up being like either having to take up two spaces or being like out in the, in the road. Um, and even like parallel parking is going to be more difficult with a van for sure because it's a bigger rig. Um, I'm not sure about the mechanics of like driving and how things look from higher up because uh, I haven't yet <laughs> been in that situation. But I imagine it's a, it's a learning curve in that you're a bit higher up, you have more of a blind spot, you have to find spots that are much larger. Um, so again, parking is probably going to be much more difficult because you need to find a van-sized uh, parking spot as opposed to a car-sized parking spot. Um, and then the cost of maintenance. So of course, larger rig, more setup. Um, having solar panels, having electricity, having all these things, AC, um, all these different things. Maintenance issues are going to cost way more in a van than it's going to cost in a car. 
Um, I would hope that depending on like the year or how old your vehicle is, you wouldn't have to face as many issues. But again, things as simple as like oil changes and all these like regular car maintenance things would probably cost a lot more in a van. But again, like I said, with all the added like bells and whistles, like having electricity, having solar panels, having AC units, having like all these extra little things that make it more luxurious, it's gonna cost more when they get damaged, right? So, or when things go south. <laughs> um, personally for me, I haven't been able to invest money into those kind of things for my vehicle. I do have Sono solar panels, but it's like the foldable one and you'd have to lay it out. Um, but I like don't have like a shower, uh, system. I don't have a toilet. Well, I do have a foldable toilet. Um, there's just like, I want the level of luxury that comes with having a van in terms of the space and in terms of the organization, uh, being able to breathe, <laughs> um, having kind of that solitude within my vehicle. I feel like in a car, in a van, in a car, even if I cover all the windows, I'm still very aware of everything happening around me. Like I'm still forced to have to kind of engage with the outside world, right? Whereas in a van, I think you have a little bit more of that separation where you, when you go to the back of the van, even if you have windows, you're pretty much like in your own space and it's okay, you know? Um, so those are some pros and cons. Um, I feel like, especially with the restrictions that I mentioned in terms of parking overnight or just parking in certain spaces, vans, van lifers, RV lifers are definitely more likely to get picked on by cops and security guards because it's larger, it's more prominent, um, it's much easier to see how long they've been there, whereas a car you can kind of blend in a little bit. Um, so yeah, those are some pros and cons. Hopefully in two weeks I can have an actual van <laughs> and uh, I can actually go into actual pros and cons while having a van. That's like the ultimate manifestation. I hope that you can come with me and pray and set intentions, whatever you do on my behalf for this because I really desire it. and. The whole idea of having one is super exciting to me. Even with the cons, um, I think it's just like having to adjust as necessary, right? Like even living in your car, even if you do stealth mode, like you still have to readjust in a whole nother way um, than living in, twin in an apartment or a home. And it's all about your mindset and how you approach it, you know? So I've definitely had parts on this journey where I've been just so like, I've been completely okay with having minimal possessions and, you know, minimal amount of things and being able to fit all my stuff in my car is pretty cool. But it can feel very claustrophobic sometimes when, you know, for example, and I have a cat, so this is again, a personal thing, but in an SUV, I have one cat. There are people who have multiple cats or multiple dogs in an SUV. I have one cat, and with the stuff that we have back there, I have my food stuff, I have his cat food, a lot of cat food was given to me by complete strangers, which I very much appreciate, but they're very large bags, and, you know, I have a gastric, and I have all these little tidbits that are necessary, but, like, I don't always need, so not having a space to be able to put them in, like, a separate area where they're not in my way <laughs> constantly having to readjust and put like my clothes and stuff from like my duffel bags from back there to up here when I'm going to sleep it's a whole routine and it's like I imagine that cleaning in a van depending on how much stuff you have is going to be a lot easier than cleaning in a car I really just reorganize I don't even clean there's so much cat food everywhere there's litter sand everywhere there is uh fur everywhere and i haven't just i need to go to a car wash and use a vacuum but even that is just like because i'd have to remove everything <laughs> um versus like a van where hopefully you would have like storage space where everything's tucked away and tucked in and um 
another thing which I think you'd have to experience with a van and a car but with a van hopefully again you would have that storage space that's secure while you're driving but when you have a car like this you have to make sure everything is in drive mode all the time <laughs> Like, I sometimes stack things, and it's easier aesthetically, it's easier organizationally, but as soon as I start driving, all that stuff <laughs> goes flying, which sucks. Um, I feel like I'm constantly having to reorganize and clean things, and yes, you have to do that in a van as well, but like, sometimes it just feels like too much. Um, I would love to have a, sto a stove that is built in. Um, I would love to have a, uh, what's it called? <sighs> Sink that is built in. Um, I'm kind of picking things that are actually in the van that I am van manifesting, but like basically the kind of ease of having a home on wheels is what I desire. And I think that's what a lot of people desire. And while having a car and an SUV is a great start, especially if you're not sure if you'd like the lifestyle, I've been at it a few months now and I, I know that I do enjoy the lifestyle. One of the biggest things for me is I, like, my need to travel is very random. Um, one of the reasons I don't settle down and get a job in a specific town or area is because I know that it's very instinctual sometimes. It's like, okay, I'm getting overwhelmed by being here. I'm getting bored by being here. I need to get up and go. And being able to just do that is the best thing ever for me. Not everyone likes that travel aspect. Not everyone needs that travel aspect. Not everyone needs to, you know, be able to get up and go. Some people are very secure with being in one place all the time, and that's okay. And maybe they travel once out of the year. And that's great. For me, I find that sometimes I get bored very easily or I need a change of scenery in order to kind of spark up my creativity in a new way. Um, my, like, I... I don't think I said it in this particular video, but driving to Washington was a very, very highly intuitive drive for me because so many things became clear for me, so many things unraveled for me, so many, like, it was like soul searching on a whole nother level, so it was very necessary for me and I don't regret it whatsoever, so, you know. I don't know, maybe another day I'm gonna wanna just drive to freaking Montana, just because. And I like being able to do that. I like being able to say, oh, I don't really like this particular town. I'm gonna drive all the way out to the desert for a few days, you know? Or I'm gonna drive to like a colder place. Like Oregon, Oregon was freaking gorgeous. Hello, excuse, like, Northern California was fucking gorgeous. Like, there are places I traveled through that I was like, I would want to live here. It's so pretty. Um, but yeah, even being able to say like, oh, it's summer. I'm going to go somewhere that's colder. Oh, it's winter. I'm going to go somewhere that's warmer. Oh, you know what? I would really love like a more rainy uh, area. Let me go to Washington. <laughs> you know, like. I don't know, it's like a level of control over your environment that I really enjoy. Um, so those are some of the things I can think of off the top of my head. Obviously, I don't have a van yet, so there may be more pros, more cons. Uh, definitely let me know down below if you have either one of these vehicles or if you can think of something else. Um, but those are just some of the things I've seen and experienced for myself um, traveling. Like I said, the biggest thing I've seen is like being some places where I'm not supposed to be parking, but because I'm a car, I can blend in a lot easier and being just like, oh, I want a van, but I'm glad I don't have a van right now because this would have not worked out as well, you know? So, um, yeah, uh, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.